So here we are, another Confessions of a Minimalist. So these episodes are what I like to call a podcast format, meaning I'm just basically talking and you guys can listen and don't need to worry about actually watching the video because I'm not giving you any additional uh, footage, any additional B-roll. I've debated on turning this into an actual podcast. So if you think that Confessions of a Minimalist would make a good podcast, comment below and let me know what you think. So for today's confession, I am sharing what I do instead of making New Year's resolutions. I used to love a good New Year's resolution. I was all about it. I always had at least one, if not three, but they always seem to be a little too vague or a little too specific. It's either I'm gonna start working out more or I'm gonna work out three times a week, specifically doing only bar classes for 60 minutes, but then on alternating days, I'm going to be doing yoga. One option is super easy to push off because it's super vague and the other is just not sustainable. Needless to say, I never Never was actually successful with my resolutions. So what's changed? What have I done differently? So first thing was starting with small habits. So some books that are great for kind of learning about the impact of habits um, is The Power of Habit and Atomic Habits. Uh, both books are just great and kind of put things in perspective. So habits to me are like the little pebble that you throw into a pond that create a ripple effect. I'm definitely not the first person to use this analogy, um, but it's one of my favorite analogies. So an example of this is for me, if we're talking about, again, wanting to work out more as a sort of new year goal, new year resolution. So for me, I just had my two uh, baby boy twins. When I got that clearance to return to my normal activities after my C-section, I needed to kind of figure out a new routine for exercising. And so rather than just kind of going big out the gate, I decided I'm gonna start out small. I'm gonna wake up at 6 a.m. every day and do the rowing machine for 15 minutes. Now that might seem super simple, but for me at this stage, that is, that is the mountain I need to climb. So it's a realistic time for me. It's an attainable time for me. And as well as that, it's a realistic sort of amount of time that I can spare at this time to be on the rowing machine. So then the next thing is increase the demand. What I mean by demand is demand of time because all of this requires time. So once I master that smaller habit, once I kind of am consistent with that smaller habit for say at least 30 days. I now know, okay, I think I'm safe to bump it up to 30 minutes a day. Uh, maybe it's 15 minutes on the rowing machine and 15 minutes of boxing, or maybe it's just bumping it up to 20 minutes on the rowing machine or 25 minutes. But now at this point, I'm kind of building off of that first smaller habit. This way I then know I'm ready for that next step. Then we have prioritize habits in your routine. My routine basically is made up of habits is made up of, you know, specific habits that I want to have to kind of contribute to my health, you know, my mental health, physical health, emotional health, or to the efficiency of my schedule or the efficiency of my life or the efficiency of my time. So if you watch my fashion YouTube channel and have watched my capsule wardrobe videos, very similar to that process of, you know, choosing your anchor pieces, the pieces that you want to revolve the rest of the wardrobe around. This is sort of a similar thing. You choose the habits, the, you know, important habits that you then want to revolve your routine around, that you want to revolve your schedule around. So instead of trying to fit these habits into your tight schedule or fit this these habits into your routine, you're creating your routine or your schedule around the habits. And ultimately what this does, again, is makes these habits a lot more attainable. It makes the action a lot easier. Um, and it then creates this sort of default uh, sort of routine. And before you know it, you are sustaining those resolutions or goals for the whole year. And the last thing, probably one of the most important things is essential action. Instead of just making a statement and kind of just letting it float out into the abyss, you are taking action for these essential things that you want in your life. So for me as an example, I'd say like my new year's resolution is that I want 
more family time with my family. Um, now, you know, bringing, going from a family of three to a family of five, things are a little bit more chaotic. I want to make sure that we're getting that quality family time in and less of that, you know, easy default TV time for me, instead of just saying, yeah, that's what I want. And just kind of saying that I look at it in a way like, well, how, like, how can I actually take action for that to happen? And so what we discussed is that, okay, well, let's like, what's something that we enjoy doing? And I'd say both my husband and I enjoy cooking. And my, my son, my six-year-old son loves cooking as well. My three-month-old babies, who knows, they're still excited about their fists. So when life kind of gets in the way, you're sort of just kind of making things to just survive. So for us, we're like, all right, we all like cooking. So that's an easy thing that can be done in our home and it has to be done anyways. So we decided, okay, we'll pick a night of the week uh, Wednesday because we don't really have anything going on. There's no real activities. Wednesdays kind of seem like you don't really make as many plans as you do, you know, towards the end of the week or the beginning of the week. So we're like, all right, Wednesdays are going to be our family cooking nights. And this means that we're going to start really early and we're going to take our time, enjoy the process of prepping and cooking, as well as that, you know, enjoying setting the table and creating a sort of huga um, experience, that nice cozy, warm, inviting, you know, sort of atmosphere where you just want to kind of hunker down and be and just really, yeah, have it be a whole experience of the cooking experience, the setting the table, um, setting the mood, and um, just really having that quality family time. This is an essential thing that we want to happen. And now we have a sort of action plan for it. You can have that on the calendar, you can have that in your routine. And then what happens is you then revolve everything else around it. So you said, oh yeah, we can't do that that night because that's our family cooking night. And there we go. Simple as that. That is what I do instead of New Year's resolutions. I think basically what I'm saying here <laughs> is just, you can have a New Year's resolution, but don't just have it be some sort of statement that you just poof, put out into the world. Make an action plan. And what I've talked about here today is just basically some ways that you can take that action. And there we go. All right, my friends, that's it for Confessions of a Minimalist. Comment down below if there's anything that you want to hear me confess about. All right, well, have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.